Now we've got the ability to display our inventory and to take items. We want to create an action to allow players to use items in their inventory. We're only going to create a single action, which will happen if the player uses the skull in the right room. But we're going to create it using the same pattern as we did for input actions, meaning if we wanted to add further actions, we could later. So I'm trying to design this to be a little bit extendable. Might be overkill. You tell me what you think at the Q&A. Um, but I think it's the right way to do it, so I'm going to do it that way. So we're going to first create a base class, which is going to be called Action Response. And so in our scripts folder, we're going to create a new C Sharp script, which is going to be called Action Response. And this is also going to be a abstract class, right? Just like our base class for input action is abstract and kind of serves as a template for other classes. Action response is going to be the same, even though we're only ever going to make one action response. It is going to also inherit from scriptable object, and it is going to have a public string called required string. So this is going to be kind of like the key that we're going to check against to see if something is possible. In this case, we're going to be checking, are you in the right room to use the skull? But you could just use that string for whatever. Um, then we're going to have a public, another abstract function, which is going to be called do action response. Let's actually move this down because this is a variable and this is a function. And it's going to take in a game controller called controller, right? So remember when you're making scriptable objects which execute code, you want to pass in any scene references as an argument when you're calling the function, right? So here we're going to pass in a reference to the game controller so that we can work with scene objects. You don't want to be setting variables on your scriptable objects from the scene. That leads to unpleasant behavior. So save that. Now we can create the first action response, the first and only action response, which is going to inherit from action response. So we're going to create a new C sharp script and this is going to be called change room response. I could have just called it change room but we don't want to get confused with the other ones. Um, we're going to open it for editing. This is going to inherit from action response. We are going to create an asset out of this I'm going to add an action responses folder, even though we don't really need it. And this is going to be called change room. This might be like classic over tooling, but I think it's, I think it's good. Okay. And so this is going to have a public room, which is going to be the room to change to. So the way that we're going to handle this is if you bring the skull to the right room and you use the skull, it's going to change you to a new room where the secret door is open, right? So this action response is going to change, a, change rooms to a room that wasn't available via an exit, right? So that's the way we're handling kind of changing state. We're just going to change to a new room where we're now sort of in a new timeline almost. So we are going to override do action response. And we're going to check if controller.roomnavigation.currentroom, current room dot room name equals required string. So here we're checking the room name, right? Then controller.roomnavigation.currentroom equals room to change to. So we're going to change rooms. So if we use the item in the right room, then we're going to change rooms to a new version of that room where the, the secret door is open. And then we're going to say controller dot display room text and return true. So we succeeded. Otherwise, we're going to return false. Okay. So we are going to add these to certain items which trigger functions. So we're going to add this to our interaction class. So back in the interaction script, we're going to add a public action response called 
action response. And for most interactions, this is going to be null. We're just going to leave it empty. But for our use verb on our skull, we are going to do this action response. Now, we need the next thing that we need to do is to create a use input action, which can check if we have the thing in our inventory and then attempt to use it. So we're going to do that next. Yeah, my hope is that uh, we've set this up in such a way that you could maybe give the system to a non-coder and they could actually just use all the building blocks we've made and make, make little games with it, right? That would be really cool uh, if that was the end result of this. And that's why I'm trying to kind of do everything through scriptable objects so we can kind of plug them around in the editor and hook stuff up. And like theoretically, you know, once we get this use working, uh, you're going to have some flexible stuff and then you can figure out what other like use style actions that change the state of the game that you might want to have and, and, and build those in as action responses.